Okay, everybody, I need you to take a deep breath in. Okay, we are about to cover context, which is easily one of the most complicated concepts to grasp with JavaScript. It's not actually a difficult concept. Uh, when you get it, it makes sense. Uh, but grasping it and grasping how it applies can be very difficult for JavaScript developers, especially if you're starting off. So I'm going to try to get into it, going to try to make it as easy as possible, but don't feel bad if you got to rewatch this video multiple times. It's just not that easy to get the first time around. Once again, context is, the, is what the value of this is for your code that is running. Um, I'll just let the code do the talking here. Let's go ahead and get this console log nice and big here. Um, if I was to console log the value of this in my root scope, by default, this is the window object. So if I was to console log, does this equal window? Yes, this equals window. So I could actually go var a equals one and console log this dot a and it equals one. I have no reason to do that in, when I'm working in the root scope. I could go window dot a equals one. I could also just go console log a that also equals one. Uh, but that just shows you in the default, the root scope, the context is this. Um, I could also go function foo console log this and then let's run foo and you'll see that that's also the window object if you remember from the scope video the scope has changed we now have a child scope but the context is still this now the reason why is because by default a a function runs within the scope of the object that it sits in so I can also run it as window foo because if you remember when you create something in the root scope it's a part of the window object whenever I run foo by default it's going to run within the context of the object that it sits on. That's why window is the default uh, context. Let me show you how that context can be different. If I go ver obj, let's create an object now. And let's create a method or a function on this. Foo is a function and this will just console log this. So now I'm going to run obj.foo. And now it's console logging the object as the value of this. It's running obj. I could also say, does this equal obj? Yes, true. Does this equal window? No, false. By default, and I keep saying by default, uh, by default it runs with a context of the this value is the object that that sits on. Now, one of the tricky things about context is that this value can actually change. Depending on how you call this foo function, depending on who runs it and by and how they're running it, uh, the value of this can actually change. And at first, that sounds stupid. Why would you want the exact same code for all the values to be different? Uh, but the next example I'll show you uh, shows you exactly why that's very useful. Real quick, I'll show you the three JavaScript methods of changing context. They are call apply and bind i won't go too deep into this but it's just important that you know these are the three that do that um, so basically i can go call foo call window and now it's going to run object.foo but it's going to change the context to window so now does this equal window yes it does if i take that away and just run foo does this equal window no it does not so what i've done with call is i've changed the context that this fires in. And the next, uh, if you give call more than one argument, uh, say one, two, three, then that's the arguments that you're passing up here. So basically if I give it one, one's gonna go up there, two's gonna go up there, three's gonna go up there, if I need to pass arguments to the function. So you just go on and on and on with call. Call and apply are basically the exact same thing. The only difference is, is apply only takes two arguments. It takes the new context and it takes an array, which are going to be all the arguments up here. So I give it an array and now the first of the array goes there, the second of the array goes there, and the third of the array goes there. So call and apply are the exact same thing. Bind is a little different, takes the one argument, and what it does is it doesn't actually execute your foo function like call and apply do. It returns a bound function. So I could go bare my bound foo equals this. And so now my bound foo is a function 
that always executes foo with the context of window. So now every time I run my bound foo, it will console log this equals window true. So if I run my bound foo true, if I go obj foo, then it's going to say false. So true, when I run it here, the context is window. False, when I run it normally, the context is not window, it's obj. So that's kind of how you change it. Probably doesn't make sense as to why you'd need to change it. Uh, all that need, all that you need to know is that it can be changed. Let me let me show you now how uh, an actual real world example of that being a different value. Uh, let's go jQuery here. Body on click function. I, instead of doing a function, I'll just go obj foo. So now I'm going to run obj foo when the body is clicked. So there you go, and it says that the context is not window when I run foo. Let me see what is the context. Click on the body, and the context is the element that was clicked on. Uh, with JavaScript, whenever you set up an event listener on the click element, when I set up a click listener on the body element, um, and I run that, then it's going to run with the context of the element that was clicked. That way I have access to it. So now whenever I run this, I know which element was clicked by the this object. This points to the body element in the DOM. So let me show you how this is actually useful. Um, down here I have an LI. Let me show you the code. I have UL with LIs in it. Each LI has been clicked zero times, and we want to increment this when you click on the LI. Pretty simple. So I'm going to go li on click function and now i'm going to go let's uh so right now whenever i click on an li what i've done is i have set up an li listener so this listener is on all li's and whenever i click on it um the this function the this value will not be all li's the this value will only be the element that was clicked so there we go. I click, and the first time you can see that it's that li. If I were to click this li, now the this is the third li. If I click here, this is the second li. So what I can do is I can go li span HTML. Um, so let me, I'm going to actually go there, current times. I'm going to grab the number of times it's been clicked. I actually have to parse it as an integer because by default in the HTML that zero is a zero string it's not a zero number so I have to parse it I have to get the HTML out of that span parse it into a number and then I'm going to go li span again is going to be current times plus one so if I do this it's going to change all li spans that's not the desired effect. I want to only change the li that got clicked on. So now I can actually use this. This points to the li that got the click. Let's find a span inside of that li, which is where find is very useful. And let's get that HTML. So I'm getting the value. When you click on this li, it's going to find a span inside. It's going to grab that HTML value out of it, parse it into an integer. And now same thing right here. And so then same thing, I want to find that same span and I want to print the new incremented value in there. So that will now only change the one I clicked on, only change the one I clicked on, only change the one I clicked on. Let me give you a common problem that people run into now that has to do with context. Uh, let's go on to my second example code. My second example code here is I've got a div with a bunch of nasty HTML that I printed in line. I printed some styles in line, which of course is a terrible ID idea. Um, this div is hidden. It's got a display none on it. Um, and so I want to show that div. Um, let's save that. There we go. And so now what I'm going to do is on, I think that's called open div. That's what this button is called, open div, on click. I'm going to I'm going to do two things here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, which is the button that got the click, open div, and I'm going to toggle the class 
to active. Ugh. There you go. So there you go. The class active is going to toggle off and on. Um, so then what I want to do is I want to find, what's the name of that div? Oh, div1. I'm now going to find div1, and I'm going to slide toggle that. There we go. Let's say some guy in the business department said, absolutely, I cannot toggle this class to green until it slid out. Let's say there's something more going on here. There's 10 different animations, and I had to wait until it had slidden down to toggle this to green. So then what I have to do is I have to slide it to toggle, and I have to run a callback, and then after it slid, then this callback function will fire, and then I'm going to toggle this to active. There we go, save the code, run it. Slides out fine, but it doesn't toggle to active. Why doesn't that toggle to active? Because this is now pointing to div one. This is a callback to this event listener, and it's no longer firing in context to open div. It's kind of like, remember when we had that scope naming conflict? If I do var a equals one here, and var a equals two here, I've now created a name conflict. Now I have no way of accessing this a. Um, that just happened with the this. That just happened with my context. Um, when this thing calls this, it's going to look and see that my function already has a context. That context is div1. So I have no way of accessing it this. Uh, there's, there's two ways to get around it. You can get around it uh, with scope. I do have access. Since this, was, this function was created in this scope here, I have access to all the parent scope variables. So I can go var self equals this. I can create a variable. That variable, all it does is point to this. And now I have access to self. If I look for self, it's going to look in this context. Okay, self has not been created. Let's look in my parent scope. Ah, self has been created. It points to this, which is the open div. And now it's going to work. There you go. Um, you can call this anything you want. Some people call it underscore self. Some people call it underscore this. Uh, some people will call it open div. Uh, you can really call it whatever you want, as long as it makes sense. Uh, but that's kind of how you get around it using scoping, creating a parent scope variable that you have access to. Uh, the other way around it is you can actually bind this function right here to always run within the context of this. So what you can do is when I create this function, I can go bind this so that it creates the function. It runs bind on the function, and it returns that bound function to the second argument of slide toggle. So now, in this inside of this callback, this will always equal open div. So that will also work. This, that, that, this, this, that. Hopefully you're not too confused by that. So that's the way you can do it with bind. The only disadvantage to using bind is it's a lot less code. Um, but I have no way of accessing this as div1 anymore because it has been bound to where this always equals open div. Uh, you may have to watch this part again to really get what just happened, but that's kind of your intro to context. I'm going to create one more video on context where we get into the JavaScript modular pattern. It's kind of something you'll want to know before you start learning backbone.js. Uh, but let's go ahead and close this up for now. That's context. That's the weird and cool things about JavaScript. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Have a great day.